February 7th, 1916. Sir, I have the honor to report the shipment today by express in two carloads of 50 each of 100 elk to the state of Pennsylvania as authorized by your letter of September 9th. February 17th, 1913. Dear Colonel Brett, the 50 elk captured under your supervision in Yellowstone Park for the State Forest Reserve of Pennsylvania arrived in good shape a couple of weeks ago. They are now under fence in a small enclosure and are being fed until conditions are suitable to turn them loose in late spring. Elk had been killed in great numbers on the present site of the city of Philadelphia, even as late as the middle of the 17th century. This section of Pennsylvania was the last place to be settled in the east. It was Seneca, Indian land. It was hostile territory until after the Revolutionary War. By 1750, the elk were already showing the efforts of persecution. Like so many other big game animals, they were slaughtered by the thousands without thought of the future. Many were slain merely for the hide and the souvenir tooth. And the first white settlers didn't come into the area until the early 1800s, and then only a very few at a time. It was a hard country to get to. It was isolated, and the country was especially hard on women and children. By Civil War era, uh, people were living on Winslow Hill, uh, breaking up the original forest, doing some farming on it. Uh, at the same time, elk, of course, were, were just about extirpated from Pennsylvania in the 1860s. As the 1800s unfolded, the increasing human population and demand for meat began to take its toll on other wildlife. Elk were exterminated in southeastern Pennsylvania and rare west of the Allegheny River by the beginning of the 19th century. By the late 1840s, they had disappeared from the southwestern part of the state and from the Pocono Plateau. By the 1850s, what remained of Pennsylvania's once mighty elk population was limited to sections of the North Central, predominantly Cameron, Elk, and McKean counties. In 1867, the last Pennsylvania elk was shot. Gradually, the country filled up. They were attracted in the early days, mostly for the open land. The land was very cheap. And then uh, timber speculators bought much of, the, uh, much of the area for timber. Uh, timber was a major industry in the area from about 1860 until uh, 1910. But after the timber was exhausted, the land was almost completely devastated. It took early Pennsylvanians less than 200 years to extirpate the buffalo herd, the stately elk, the eastern mountain lion, and even the wolves. Fortunes were made and lost, but the strain of conquering a wilderness was over, and industrialization brought shorter working hours to the laboring man. With leisure came time for meditation and recreation. Following the logging, it was repeated forest fires, so the land was devastated. Some people thought it would never recover, but there was a few uh, far-sighted individuals that thought otherwise, and that was the beginning of the state forest and the state game sy system that we have today. Toward the end of the 19th century, interested men began to wonder what was happening to wildlife. Out of this chaos, and through the unswerving efforts of a few dedicated and far-seeing men, was born the theory of conservation of Pennsylvania's wilderness and wildlife. What was left was to be encouraged and protected. What had vanished might be replaced from stock left in other parts of the country. So, um, I was born and raised in the village of Dents Run. It once was a former lumber town. There was perhaps 200 people that lived in the village about 1900. After the timber was cut, the people gradually moved away, and now we have about 12 full-time residents here. Coincidental with the desire to restore Pennsylvania's lost wildlife, a crisis arose among the enormous elk herds which thronged Jackson Hole, Wyoming. During the winters of 1909 through 1911, terrific losses were caused by starvation, and the federal government, in an effort to alleviate the situation, decided to dispose of some of the live animals. The winter of 1911-1912 was the beginning of all shipping and restocking with elk taken from Yellowstone Park.
As there have not been elk in Pennsylvania since the beginning of game protection, there is now no law protecting them. And we have, before the legislature, an act April 16, 1913. Dear Dr. Penrose, it will be interesting to know if they have thrived in their new environment, if they have proven a nuisance, loss or increase, whether any have apparently attempted to return to their native country, and any other information truly yours, Lloyd M. Brett, Lieutenant Colonel, 1st Cavalry, Acting Superintendent. If they thrive, we probably shall attempt to introduce more next winter. September 9th, 1915. Sir, I enclose herewith copy of a letter granting authority to the Board of Game Commissioners of Pennsylvania to secure 100 elk from the Yellowstone National Park. Respectfully, Bo Sweeney, Assistant Secretary. September 13th, 1915. My dear Colonel Brett, the Game Commission of Pennsylvania has received permission from the Department of the Interior to capture 100 elk in Yellowstone National Park. I have written to Mr. Howard Eaton of Wolf, Wyoming, who attended to the capture and transportation of elk for Pennsylvania three years ago, asking him to look after the matter at this time. Sincerely yours, Charles B. Penrose. January 14, 1916. If Hopkin arranged to the use of Anderson's corrals, after Anderson has filled his orders, it strikes me that the Pennsylvania elk could be gathered in a night or two and save all rough ground and hauling. Yours truly, Howard Eaton. February 5th, 1916. The bearer, Mr. Howard Eaton, is traveling in charge of two carloads of wild elk shipped from Yellowstone National Park to the game commissioners of the state of Pennsylvania by authority of the secretary. Only select elk are shipped, and they were in first class condition when they left the park. F.T. Arnold, captain of cavalry, commanding for the acting superintendent. Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming, February 7th, 1916. Received from the acting superintendent of the Yellowstone National Park, 100 elk, 20 males, and 80 females to be transported to Pennsylvania under the authority of the Secretary of the Interior, dated September 9, 1915. Howard Eaton. Pennsylvania made its first releases in 1913, when 50 elk from Yellowstone and 22 from a private preserve in Monroe County were shipped to the north central part of the state. The elk were divided equally between Clearfield County and Clinton County. Twelve of the Monroe County animals were released in Monroe County itself, and 10 were sent to Center County. The elk arrived by railroad at the village of Howard Siding, six miles west of Emporium, in December 1915, and were greeted by large crowds of hunters, farmers, and curious onlookers. The elk were unloaded into crates and hauled up over the mountain, pulled by teams of horses, and released on the west branch of Hicks Run. One of the most interesting questions, to me at least, is why did the elk survive here in no other area of, this, of the state? They were released in at least 10 different counties, but this is the only place that they managed to survive. There were elk in, in Clinton County, Potter County, uh, Clearfield County, and other counties, but uh, some, at least a few animals remained in, a, in those areas until about 1930, but this, was the, this area here was the only place that it survived. There were extensive stands of aspen uh, that came in as a result of the repeated fires after the logging days. This was probably ideal habitat for the elk and again, uh, it was it was public land or would soon be state either state forest or state game land so that offered a certain measure of protection to the animals up until at least the 1930s there was not really an all-weather road into the area and so the, the roads were all dirt and unpaved so it was a remote area uh, when you wanted to come here hunting or for any, fishing or any other purpose, generally uh, you come by railroad, really. The local people took a protective attitude towards them. And you cannot discount the 
just pure chance that they that they really really survived here and nowhere else so all these factors come together at one time to uh, favor the elk some good things have happened uh, with the improved habitat we we now have had uh, 10 or 11 elk seasons uh, we're able to harvest some elk every year and the herd is still growing so proper a uh, mixture of forest age classes out there is really important for elk and all the species of wildlife we're dealing with. There's no set goal for a certain number. If we end up with over a thousand elk in this part of Pennsylvania and the conflicts remain low and we can have a hunting season, then that's the number we'll go with interesting there were very few elk on Winslow Hill in, in the early days they were mostly confined back into the more remote areas of state forest and state game lands it's pure speculation but I believe there were probably no more than two dozen elk alive in Pennsylvania during a short period in the 1930s that seems hard to believe today now we have more than 900 elk scattered out over seven or eight hundred square miles Pennsylvania is fortunate in having the land and the resources to support a thriving elk herd. This is due largely to vision and foresight of a few dedicated individuals who for more than 100 years saw the need to protect and preserve what was left of our open land and wildlands. For those who enjoy the outdoors and wild things, we owe these early pioneers in the conservation movement a debt that can never be repaid.